Good evening, folks. Good evening, Mark. Back to Hope Baptist Church. Good to have you back this afternoon. Hope everybody's had a good evening. The Lord bless you. Man, it's been good to us. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. I checked the weather for Wednesday and it's calling for a chance of rain and a high about 58 or 59 degrees. So that might be a good time to come and sit in the car and listen to the preaching on Wednesday night. But uh, uh, anyway, we will, uh, by the grace of God, have service Wednesday night, so don't forget that. Uh, sign ministry meeting. After the uh, service tonight, if you uh, are interested in being a part of the sign ministry uh, this summer, uh, then just hang around after the service. We'll meet right up here. I'll give you your signs out and, and things like that. But just uh, uh, come on up after the service and we'll meet together here for that. Uh, let's see, let's see. Don't forget that the uh, services are on YouTube. If you know somebody didn't get a chance to, uh, somebody does not get a chance to attend the service, make sure you let them know that they'll be on YouTube. And they are uh, looking about a way to maybe put it on a uh, uh, live stream. I think that's what you call it. So uh, anyway, uh, we get ready to go to morning prayer. Continue to remember Rick. It looks like uh, he may get to come home Tuesday. He is improving. Uh, his blood pressure is going back up as normal. So we'll praise the Lord for that. And uh, he's in the uh, ICU. Uh, they did not put him on the COVID floor as I announced this morning. They put him in the ICU. And Good. so... Uh, uh, He's, he is improving, so y'all continue to remember him and Louise. Uh, remember the family of Bobby Cook. Uh, Bobby's brother was found uh, dead uh, this past, uh, when was that, Friday? I guess it was yeah, Friday. Maybe, but uh, anyway, y'all remember the family of Bobby Cook. Continue to remember Larry Ruth and the family uh, with Sherry's passing. And then uh, the two that I mentioned this morning that are uh, uh, members of the family of uh, Russ and Cheryl Elliott, that would be Carlene Scott. She had lung cancer and then Lynn Kelly. They've only given her uh, a few months to, uh, to live. So remember those. Any others tonight that we need to remember? Jerry? Uh, yeah, my neighbor, she's having some procedures down this coming week. Uh, Libby King. Okay. Remember Libby King. Also remember Ron Mock. Ron's having surgery on Thursday uh, on his show. Deal's family, Ron Yeah, remember the Deal's family. I hope you were, those of you who get emails uh, saw that. Uh, that is. Uh, they're kin to Ron Davis. I think it's like cousins or nieces and nephews or something like that. But uh, the husband was killed. A uh, little boy uh, passed away. They took him off life support. He passed away. And uh, another child is uh, still in a medically induced coma in the hospital. Uh, the wife was not with him, and another one of the daughters was not with him. So they're dealing with that. So just remember the deals, man. Any others? Yeah, you this afternoon. Thank you and praise you for a beautiful day that you've given to us. We thank you, Father, for your presence and met with us uh, this morning in the, in the service. And God, we just ask once again that you'll uh, uh, speak to our hearts tonight, allow the Holy Spirit to move here in power. Uh, God, uh, this is different. There's no doubt about it. The Lord, it, it's a lot better than what we were uh, doing. And, and God, we just, uh, we are so thankful for this opportunity that you've given us. Uh, we, we pray for the body of Christ, Lord, I know that there's a, a lot of churches now that are doing like drive-in services and, and services outside and different things. I know, Father, that some churches are going to uh, go back into the churches and, and into the sanctuaries, and we pray for safety there. Uh, but, God, we, uh, we are thankful tonight that we have this shelter, and we're thankful that we have the means of being able to broadcast the, the service. And so, Father, we just have praise and thanksgiving for you, and, and we just want to tell you that we love you, and we thank you for loving us tonight. And, Again, we just 
just ask that you draw us up close to you. Fathers, we pray tonight. We ask that you'd be with those that are suffering in body. We have many tonight that are sick, those that are uh, dealing with uh, cancer. And, and Father, we just ask that you have your hands upon them. We pray for Brother Rick. We thank you for the good news that we've heard this afternoon, that he's improving, that he's getting stronger. And we just uh, we praise you for that. We just ask that you continue to heal him. Uh, we thank you for uh, Nancy Joyce being with us this morning. God, what a blessing that was. And, and to see her and Tim, and we rejoice in that. We're, we were blessed to see Brother Cliff Lamb with us, God. And Father, what a, it's just good to see how you, you strengthen uh, your people and how you touch and heal. And God, we just give you praise for that. Father, we ask tonight that you be with all those that are in the hospitals and nursing homes. We pray for our, our nurses and doctors and first responders, God. We ask for their safekeeping. And Father, we pray once again for our nation, uh, Lord, that you would uh, you would be with our leaders, and, and God, you would have your hand upon them, and that you would work in their hearts, and God, we ask that you give them wisdom that they might be able to lead, guide, and direct this uh, this nation in the way that we should go, and uh, Father, we just, uh, we ask that you work in a very powerful way in, in our national leaders, and God, we'll thank you and praise you for that. We pray tonight for Brother Steve, we just ask God for your anointing to be upon him, give him the liberty. Uh, to preach the word of God. And may our hearts be open and receptive to what you want to do in our lives. Father, we'll thank you and praise you for all of it. We love you, Lord, and we thank you again for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
things, but I did find this one. <laughs> Oh.
don't testify when you get up there and preach. I, you know what? I, I don't know how old that song is, but I know it's at least 30 years old. I got, I've been preaching for 30 years. The first sermon I ever preached, Sharon Collins sang that song before I preached. That was 30 years ago. And you know what? I tell you right now, in 30 years of walking with the Lord, 32 years of walking with the Lord, there's been many times me and my wife didn't know how God was going to do it. Didn't, but we, we was getting anxious about when he would do it. But he's always come through for us. And I just praise his name and I thank him for all that he's done for us. And thank him for just uh, getting us through and, and being with us through all this stuff that's going on in this world. He's faithful. He doesn't change as much as the world changes. He never changes. Amen. We can always depend on him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. his name. Amen. 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 That's good. Hallelujah. Yeah, Amen. Amen.
because it was exactly what you were preaching. It was anointed. Amen. It had God all over it. It Amen. spoke to my heart. And I, I tell you, you know, I could have just texted him and said, man, that was good. That was a blessing. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you what, brother. Great message. And yep. God be the glory. That Amen. was great. Amen. Uh, and with all that being said, even what Jamie preached and talking about what Steve preached and and, and God's really dealt with my heart. My heart's in just a little bit different place tonight. You know, I kind of like to come out and eventually get back to guns blazing. And uh, I'm going to use the hit on Jeremiah. And I'm going to talk about the old ways. And that's just kind of the ministry God led me down. And tonight, I, I've got some material that could go that way. But I'll be honest with you. I just soon be out of the way, huh? I, I pray that God speak to your heart. Amen. And I think one of the places God's got me in my heart is he's, he's really dealt with me over this mess. I believe God deals with every man of God that preaches. I believe it's for him. Yeah. And it might not be for none of you. It may just be for me. And I just have to preach this to myself. Uh, but it's kind of broke. And, uh, and I appreciate God still having me in a place where he can. Amen. Amen. Hey. But with all the messages are being preached, I don't know if you pay attention to this, but I believe this is all my heart. Across this country, worldwide, I believe every God called preacher is preaching a particular message that I believe could fit in the five gallon bucket. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that a lot of it is along the lines of, hey, if you're not saved, you better get saved. Yes, sir. It's, if you're not witnessing to your lost friends, family, loved ones, whoever, you need to get to witnessing to them. Hey, church, let's clean it off. Yeah. Let's get it straightened out. Amen. Let's get to going in a particular direction. Because, hey, Jesus is coming. Amen. He's coming to get his church. Amen. I believe everybody's preaching right along them lines, and I believe with all my heart none of that is a coincidence. Right. I don't, don't seem like I don't hear a lot of preaching on feeding of the 5,000. Not there's nothing wrong with that passage of Scripture. But a lot of people want to know about the beginning of sorrow. Right. That's right. Travail. That's right. Look up for your redemption draw. Yeah, now. I see a lot of things like that going on. So, uh, with that being said, if you got your Bibles, open up to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. I'm going to read two verses of Scripture. If you have a Schofield reference to the King James Bible, hold your finger there and turn one page. And I'd also like to read chapter 6, a verse out of chapter 16. Everybody there, honk your horn, say yep. amen. That's good. I like that. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 14. I'm going to read verse. Verse, verse 12. It said, There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof, the way is death. If you'll flip your page over to chapter 16 and verse 25, the Bible says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof, all the ways of death. It said that twice and stuff, two chapters. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to breathe. Be able to open up your word and say something. Lord, I pray you'd move me out of the way quick, fast, and in a hurry, and I pray you'd speak to our heart. Yeah. I pray, God, you get all the honor, glory, and praise for any and everything that comes out of my mouth. I pray you'd use this message. I pray you'd speak to our heart. Oh, give me the right spirit, Lord, and I pray you'd just have your way. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. Pray most of all, Lord, that you change us. Change us in a way to where we're looking forward to you coming. Amen. We're ready to go. Yes. There's no reservation. There's no wonder. Amen. Praise God, we're ready to go. Amen. I pray you speak to hearts. Use this message for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, to try to I set the platform in this just a little bit. I, I want to preach a message on a surrendered heart. I said, well, how do you read a verse like that and 
preach on a message of a surrendered heart. Well, I, as much as much as I've seen this verse of scripture, as many times as I've read it, I've always kind of looked at it one way. There is a way that seems right unto man. The end thereof, the ways of death. And I always look at that and I apply that immediately to the lost man. And I believe that's exactly what it's for. But with the Bible being one interpretation and many applications, yeah. you know, God kind of opened up my eyes to a couple more things that I'd like to see if I can set a platform again, if you will, and uh, see if we can see what God has to say to us. Uh, in order to do that, I'd like for everybody to think back. I want, you to, I want you to go back in time, no matter how long ago it's been. I want you to go back to the time you were getting ready to get saved. Whether it was just before, you know, I, I could paint a picture of before you got saved, I could paint a picture of that moment before you decided to come to Christ. But I want you to think about the warfare. I want you to think about maybe what it if any of you had more than one, op one opportunity to get saved, Holy Ghost has spoke to your heart before and you turned it away. I wonder what kept you from doing that. I'm, you know, hey, I, I, I got time. It could be, I'm a good person. It could be, I don't want to give this up. It could be, what are my friends going to think? It could be so many of those things right there. But I want you to notice something. I want you to notice the moment that you decided, I want what you got, Lord. When you decided that, I'm going to tell you one thing you did. You surrendered. Yep. You surrendered to the call of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Right. Made you a new creature. Amen. All that warfare going on, Devil didn't want to lose you. Yeah. But you said, you know what, Lord? I surrender. Hallelujah. I want what you got. Amen. I'll take it. And God sets you up. Makes you a new creature. Old things are passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold, all things Amen. are become new. And we got a new heart. We got a surrendered heart. Amen. And I want to take just, just three little points. God don't never give me a message where I have three letters that are the same in an outline. I don't, I don't do the wheel, the way, the walk. I just don't. God don't give me many of them. But God give me three points of this little message, and I will kind of deal with each one of them. And I pray God speak to your heart on it. And, and first, I'm gonna talk about. I will talk about that sinner. And I'm going to talk about how, how the things that block them and how they think there's a way that seemeth right unto man. And everywhere you look today, anybody you witness to today, there'll be this. I get more people tell me how good they are than anything else. If you ever start out to witness to somebody, 90% of the people will say, well, I'm a good person. Yeah. I, I'm as good as my neighbor and he goes to church. I don't, I don't. Surely, what about that loving God? What about that loving God that there's no way he'd throw me in the head? He wouldn't do that. He's a God of love. You know, I, what about I'll, I'll take my chances? But you know the bottom line is this. We pride ourselves on what we do, how we look, what we have. And there's usually a place where that pride and that ego gets in the way to where, I'll be honest with you, doing good to your neighbor, doing things, hey, all that's good. We're just, we need more good people in the world. I wish there was. But you know, it's a little different when it comes to salvation. Yes, yes, if it was about being good, I've always wondered, how much good would you have to do right. in order to know you've done enough right. to hit the mark Amen. to get in? Amen. That's always been a mystery to me. And besides that, and this is even bigger, I think for anybody to 
say that, that's an open slap in the face to Jesus yes, Christ. Amen. If that was the case, why would he have to come and do what he did? Amen. Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I know with all that being said, that I'm glad I got to a place to where he offered it to me. And I said, I'll take it. There's a lot of ways that I thought I was doing right. I used to justify my actions by drinking two less beers than I normally do. Night we had stealing. I justified my alcoholism, if you will, because I was able to stay about all night and get through the day and the night without bringing any alcohol to where I could go, see, there I got it. Can I hold it? And we'll justify it. There's a way that seemeth right. On there you man. go. Right. But the end thereof, the way is the day. Right. Bottom line is, is I'll tell you why most people don't come to Christ. They don't want to surrender. Amen. They don't want to surrender because all of us in our nature, we like control. Right? I won't have control. So for the sinner, there is a way that seems right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Yep. But you know, not only did I want to deal with the sinner, I wanted to deal with the saint. What do you mean? Death. Hold up. There is a way that seemeth right unto the saint. But you can spiritually die by going the wrong direction. Now I'm not talking about losing your salvation. Y'all don't, don't run off the cliff with me here. Don't you think about this, what the preacher mentioned this morning. Some people have a relationship, and I believe it's about right here, and he just got done jumping about four times. He said, some people got a relationship with the church. There you go. Amen. Got, some people's got a relationship with the church. And that right there is kind of what I want to deal with. You know, we've got into this. Here's where I'm getting into the old way, man. Uh, you wonder about this COVID-19. You wonder about... God allowing it. You know, you, you ever think he might have allowed it because he was sick to death of our ritual? Yes, Do you ever think he was sick of our ritual in such a way where he gets everybody around and the men that get up and start preaching or the ones that start preaching, hey, get your house in order. Jesus go. is coming. Maybe he wanted that preached. Amen. Maybe we've got so laxed and so lazy and so complacent yep. and comfortable. Go ahead, brother. That we don't get anything out of it other than checking our box off on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And at the end of the year, we get a little bad saying we've been, been, never missed a service all year long. It ain't got enough power. God bust a peanut. Right. I don't know about you, but when you come to the house of God, I like seeing move. Yes, I'm running sir. right back into it. <laughs> I'm running right into it. Yeah, I miss that. Yes. And if this what it took, I believe the Bible says all things work together for right. good to them that love God. If this what it took to get God back in his house yeah. to where he looking through the window and he can come in and sup with us and us with him. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm all for it. Amen. Bring it on to come. Amen. I'm all for that. Because I'll tell you what, there's nothing in this world. That stuff, there ain't, I'll tell you, I've been as Short of putting a needle in my veins, I've been high in a lot of ways. I ain't proud of that, but it is what it is. But as high as I've been and the life I've lived in the past, I'll promise you this. Yeah, that the Holy Ghost of God come by me and woo my soul yeah. and tell me I'm His and He's mine and I'm glory bound. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you there's nothing like that in the world. Yeah. Nothing that I won't go back there for. Yeah. Hey, I'm if that's what it takes to get a sinner uncomfortable sitting in the house of God, I'll take it. Amen. If it gets a saint closer 
things in our life to get us to the place where He wants in our life. I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to think about Adam and Eve. Yep, no stone. I want you to think about Adam and Eve. God had a desire to meet with them. He had a desire to fellowship with them. It wasn't no, I'm going to sit up here and I'm not going to talk to you. He come down in the cool of the day and he longed to be with them. And they done something in such a way that hindered that fellowship. Sin got in the way. And he had to make something. So what they could go back to having some fellowship. We've sacrificed animals and everything else, but then there come one. Uh, that one. I said, Lord, Father, I'll pay the sin debt. I'll go. Do you know why he did all that? Do you know why I'm saying that? Because he longs to have a relationship with us. I said this the last time I got to stand up and preach in this front of the camera. God is a lot more upset with the sin going on in the church than he is going on in the world. Yes, sir. Amen. God wants to meet with us. And he gives us the recipe. So we can and I pray tonight that it would mean enough to us that we could get our house in order. That we could surrender as saints. I'm not talking about the way that seems good. I'm fixing to get on that being my last point. But you know, there is a way for the saint. And it's more to it coming in here and checking the box. And I, I'm sorry, it, it has to do with prayer. It's got to do with getting together and fellowship and forsaking not to sin with thyself together to some end and to some end. It's all about that. And we take it so lightly. And there's more to it. And there is a way that seemeth right to a saint. There's a way that seemeth right to a sinner. And then there's a way that seems right to the service. To our service. And if you're dealing with a mega church, there's one thing you'll see everywhere. Is we're doing good. We're doing more. We do more than ever before. And I dare say the church is weaker than it's ever been. Why is that? Because we've got stuff out of order. And I, I read those verses of Scripture and I named this message a surrendered heart. And I've said all this and I've said one thing about surrendered other than when you first got saved. But when it comes to our service, our service is no good until your heart is surrendered. I'm going to say that again. Your service is no good until your heart is surrendered. Amen. My service isn't either until I'm surrendered. Amen. And I think maybe the way this message worked on me is because, you know, I'd like, to think, I'd like to think I'm somewhat spiritual. I'd like to think I know a little bit about the Bible. But the way I look at that right there, if it's in the way, pride steps in and my surrender's not there. It can't be because pride's in the way. But our service, we do good, we do better, we do good, we do better. How about trying this? How about trying to surrender? And I'm going to tell you where this will get hard because I'll take you back to when you first got saved. When you first got saved, you threw up your hands, hallelujah, Jesus, I'm going with you. But now as your walk starts, and things come into your life. I'll give you an example. Let's say you don't get a prayer answer in the time frame you think it ought to be answered. Watch how we do this. We'll tend to take matters into our own hands. Well, I'll give you that. We'll just 
got to take matters in our own hands. Let me tell you why we subconsciously do things like that. Because we feel like God needs our help. We feel like we need to help God because He saved us and it's our way to repay Him. And God don't need your help. God needs your heart. God needs your help. Alright. God needs your heart. He needs your heart. Now, I don't pick on nobody's got a new car. Go and buy a new car. Don't, don't, don't take that out. God leads you to buy a car. Hallelujah. Think about somebody's going. I talked to somebody last week about this, and this Holy Ghost just lit this up for me. You think about buying a new car. Interest rate's low. This guy over here come in, it was $200 less than what you thought it was going to be. I'm going to give you 500 more in on your trade. And the stars are just lining up. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take the convenience and we'll mistake it as God's will. Well, how do you know it's not God's will? Let me tell you about a little fellow named John. John was a little fellow that God told him, I want you to go to this little place called Nineveh. And I want you to tell the people about it. And John, he said, you know what? He said, oh, I don't like it. And I don't want to come. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down to John. And I'm going to catch me a bus to I ain't going to open it. And he tore out to Joppa. And you ain't going to believe it. But there's a boat sitting right there. Nope. Nope. Well, this has got to be God's will. <laughs> It's right there. Am I making sense to anybody? Yeah, yeah. And how do we do that? See, there's a way that seemeth right unto man. Yeah. The problem with us is, is we normally don't want to wait on God to find out what His way is. Amen. We like our way, praise God. Yeah. We're kind of a little stubborn, a little impatient when it comes to His way. Yes. And I was not, not wanting to be mean because... I want you to take this, and by the time it's all said and done, I pray everybody leaves this parking lot, this facility tonight, I pray everybody pulls out of here with a surrendered heart. Because oh. I promise you this, I'm not preaching this out of meanness, hatred, I'm preaching this out of love. And God's dealing with me the whole time I'm up here dealing with this. But a lot about this service, it ain't about what all we do. It's about all we surrender. And a lot of times I'll, I, I'll go a step further. I'm not going to preach on this, but I can take a step further. And I think sometimes that real prayer and surrender holds hands. What do you mean? I'll tell you what they both are. They both hard on your flesh. Yes, sir. They both don't like not being in control. But see, if you'll surrender, you'll pray. If you'll get to praying just right, You'll find yourself in a place of surrender. And you'll find God leading you instead of you kind of helping Him along where He don't need any help. He created you. Hey, do you realize that He chose you? Take you back to your, to your lost state. Hey, praise God on a second row of a little country church. Y'all know my testimony with a cooler packed and a pack of, beer, of pills in my pocket. God come down that second row to look for me. Just like he did you, no matter what situation you were in, he came and looked for you. He, if I told you where I got saved, most of you couldn't find your way up there. I mean, it's a, it's a little man. It's, it's out there. Praise God, God knew where it was. That's right. He knew exactly where it was. He knew when I was going to be there. And he knew what it was going to take. And I praise his holy name for that. i got to read one thing when it comes to this service. I believe God gave it to me, so I don't, you know, use I tear out, I don't want to go back to my nose, but this I'm going to read. Putting this message together, I had little notes and spots everywhere. But this one, this one just a nudge. 
And in the service, in the service part of this, God said, when he sent the disciples out two by two, y'all know Judas was in that crowd too, right? Hmm. Now, if I'm right, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to tell you I'm going to think about this Bible. But I can't find one time in the Bible where Judas ever called him Lord. Called him rabbi. Called him teacher. Might have called him master. But I can't ever find where he called him Lord. It says a lot of people might be able to go serve. But I ain't so sure everybody's Y'all getting there? Yep. So in a picture of serving, this is another little, God has pressed me on Daniel ever since he gave me this message. So I'm going to give you a little something about Daniel and I'll close. <clears throat> if y'all want to turn over there, you can turn over to Daniel. Uh, let's go on over to Daniel chapter 10. <clears throat> now you know in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart. He did not defile himself a portion of the king's name. He done made up his mind he was going to go. When you get to verse, when you get to chapter 10, starting verse 1, he said, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, now I want you to watch this in the first verse. This is, this is one of them nuggets God gave me, and it's just, I love it. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understanding of the vision. Now I want you to notice in that first verse, he said thing three times. He said the thing was revealed, the thing was true, and it could be understood. And immediately I, I thought, you know that right there is a good picture of God's holy word. It's true, it's been revealed, and how to look at the Holy Ghost, it can be understood. Amen. Uh, but, you know, instead of reading all the way through, I want you to go jump over to chapter 7, if you don't mind. He described the man come up behind him, and he saw this vision. And the first part of chapter 7, or verse 7, says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. I'll say this. I noticed from the first chapter of Daniel as a young man into chapter 10 and he's well into his 90s. I noticed that God was still revealing what was true, what could be understood. And by the time you get there, he's hanging out with some other fellows. I don't know their situation. But I can tell you this. What was going on, Daniel saw it. The other ones didn't. So I said all that to say this. A surrendered life will allow you to see some things that just an old servant life can. It pay us all to be surrendered. If nothing else, if none of this has made any sense to you, I pray you'd be surrendered for when Jesus comes. Because he's coming. It may be a lot sooner than we think. I ask you two questions. How are you going to receive this? And how are you going to apply it? I pray God move in your heart. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to come up here again and preach. I love you. I thank you for all that you do. I thank the Lord for this church. I love every one of you. Appreciate it. Come on, Folks, would you 
Bow your heads, close your eyes. Thank Steve. We believe the Holy Spirit, right? He's, he's hit the nail on the head when it comes to being surrendered. We can do a lot of things for the Lord. We can go here, we can go there, we can go on missions. We can do a lot of things for the Lord. But it's really in vain if we're not surrendered. I think about that scripture where people stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, Lord, have we not done this? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not done great things? Have we not done this? Have we not done that? And, you know, Jesus looks at them and says, Apart from me, I never do. I would tell you, folks, it, it is all about the heart. It is all about being surrendered. It's not anything about us. Jesus said, without him, we can do nothing. So it's all about him. It's all about being surrendered to him. And so I just want to encourage you tonight. That whatever, whatever that looks like for you, that you surrender to the leading of the Lord. That you give up, give in to Him, and let Him control your life. I think we've probably learned a lot over the last several weeks about who we are, about what really matters to us, about what kind of desires we actually have. As the Lord searches our hearts tonight, I think we probably need to draw closer to Him. Surrender those areas of our life where we want to remain in control. Let Him have His way. Heavenly Father, as we come before the throne of grace tonight, we ask that you search us. Your word's been preached here tonight. God, we know that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It has the ability, the power to divide asunder the joints and the marrow, the soul and the spirit. And God, lay open our hearts that we can see ourselves as we really are. And God, we, we've, got to be, we've got to be honest with ourselves. We, we are honest with you because nothing's hid from you. We might try to lie about things, but nothing's hid from you. So we just need to be honest with ourselves and might take a good long look at where we are. Tie all this together, Father. Maybe, maybe it's a dealing with that stuff that we talked about this morning. Maybe it's dealing with a with a selfish heart, a, a prideful heart. I, I don't know, God, but you you know us. And Father, I pray that you help each one of us see ourselves tonight and, and see where we need to surrender our lives. God, we we can be surrendered in one area and not be surrendered in another, and it be a hindrance to what you want to do. And so, God, help us to see ourselves tonight. It helps to truly give up and, and, and give in, give over to you, lead in the Holy Spirit. I pray, I, I join Brother Steve, I, I pray we all leave here tonight with a surrendered heart. And we'll begin to see things differently, see things happening in our lives that we can only give you the praise and the glory for. So God, you have your way tonight. Thank you for all that you do for us. We want to thank you again for this day that you've given to us the opportunity again, God, to be able to come together and to worship you. God, you go with us. Keep us safe. Father, we'll give you the praise. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. Thank you, Brother Steve. Amen.